Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Daily Market Commentary. It is hump day, people. Hope you guys have all had an absolutely amazing week thus far. For those of you new to the channel, do me a favor, click that subscribe button down below so you get the updates as they become available. And when we look at those same 10 to 12 futures markets every day, identifying potential breakout trades and turning points from a trader's perspective, the key is that we leave the lines on the charts so that you can see how trades develop over time. So a couple things to talk about today. So um, early this morning, we're up about almost 20 points in the S&P, three quarters of a percent. Um, but yesterday, we had a really nice short off of the level we talked about in the daily market commentary. So for those of you that took this little level uh, from our daily market commentary yesterday, you were uh, handsomely rewarded off of this little reversal level that we had. Um, price then eventually came down and hit all of our targets. So it was a very, uh, it was a very good trading day. Now, that means that we got to remove those those. Uh, those levels, uh, but it doesn't mean this level's dead. Although I, I typically would would consider using it again, except for the fact that we came out of it and based a little bit before the strong drop. See, the basing as we came out of the level to me weakens the probability that this level works again, and it was already on a fifteen minute chart. So, what I'm going to do for now is remove that level from consideration. I'm going to take that level completely off of my charts. Um, there's a chance that we'll reverse there again. It's not a chance I'm willing to take. Um, and so I have to look now a bit higher. And I'd have to look over here to the left. Now, just above that, I've got a gap fill area. Now, that gap fill area was really found on the one-hour chart. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use really the gap fill as my next potential uh, price objective. Now, yesterday I sent out a tweet where... For those of you that were paying attention, we talked about higher swing highs and higher swing lows and that we had not put in on the four-hour chart any higher swing highs or higher swing lows. And that still remains the case, right? Um, we do have a little bit of potential higher swing low here, but I certainly do not yet have a higher swing high. So, you know, if you're trading off a of four-hour and hourly charts, you're still more inclined to be a seller. If... You, you go to smaller, smaller time periods, you might have a chance uh, to be a buyer, right? So on this little 15-minute level, uh, I think there's a chance we'll get a little reversal here uh, off of this on the 15-minute level. Now remember, 15-minute charts are always slightly lower probability. Um, and really, I, I've got to kind of wrap my lines around this whole area here. So that might be too wide for your tastes. If that's too wide for your tastes, what I would say is go down and look at the futures market. I mean, you may be able just to take this upper half here, or you can take just this lower half. Um, but this is, in reality, um, you know, probably the 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 better uh, the better opportunity, right? Is, is looking at the whole thing and including the whole pivot. Uh, so what you could do is you could take it uh, halfway in uh, or you could just wait for price to kind of come out of it and then get long as it comes back out. But that's really the, the, the level on a 15-minute time period. The thing I like about it is that it was formed right around the European market open. So things around the European open typically have a slightly better probability, okay? So that's an area to look at for today. Now, in the NASDAQ, take a look. We had a uh, our level in the NASDAQ. We had the setup for the reversal in the S&P, but the NASDAQ was a confirmation-style entry. This is why we use confirmation-style entries. Price came up into our level and continued to go through it, thus invalidating the trade, right? Those trades become invalidated when a confirmation-style entry gets poked through. So we remove this level completely. Um, that, that breakthrough of that level is also another reason why I'm not comfortable retaking that, uh, the short that we had yesterday in the S and P, um, because I think we may have eaten up all those sell orders, right? You think you, I, I talk about it as a hand going into the cookie jar. How many times can it go in? You know, well, it maybe has gone in one too many times. So the NASDAQ, uh, has already actually, has actually already done the gap fill. And that's really where we sold off from the last time. So the S and P I think is coming into that gap fill. What I see is potentially forming in both of these markets. Um, I was talking to, 
I was talking to uh, my friend yesterday, Eric, and we were talking about, you know, what does this market look like? Well, to me, it just looks like a really wide face ripping range. I mean, it's this is this is a wide, wide range bound market is really what it is. I mean, if you look at it since the end of October, it's been up and down in this 200 point range. That's really what it's done. It's just vacillated up and down in this 200 from 2600 to 2800. It's it's really just been popping through there, and and uh, until one of those areas gets broken, we've been unable to really to really move one way or the other. Now, another uh, level that that was a nice little trade yesterday for those of you that jumped in on it was the crude oil level. We got a nice little trade down in crude. Uh, down to this region here. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you took the crude trade. Uh, we got a nice little move out of that. Now we've come back into it, basing sideways, and now we've popped up obviously to the top of that level. So that level is no longer going to be valid. Uh, and I've got to look for a different level on a different time period. Well, as I zoom out, once again, chopping sideways here, I'm not in love with any of those uh, of those levels for, for reversals as of today. Uh, potentially there's a, there's some, there's some demand down below us. You'd have to go to the smaller time period, uh, to see if there's demand down below us and you can maybe make a case for this area right in here, um, which also occurred right there at the European market open. Now, once again, 15 minute levels, always slightly lower degree of probability judge based on your personal risk tolerances. Um, if that level makes sense indeed for your, uh, your trading style. But that's really the, uh, the only one that I see on here. And, and even on that, we're down at a 15-minute level. And that's really kind of a retest of this area here to the left. But seeing as how this was done at 5.30 in the evening, I don't pay much credence to it. Gold. Uh, gold, we actually are, you know, we're, we're kind of putting in a little bit of a, uh, of a uh, falling wedge pattern here. Um, this is a falling wedge in a rising market. Now, leave it leave a uh, here's a here's a quiz for you and put it in the comments. What does a falling wedge in a rising market typically mean? Okay? And that's not a perfectly formed wedge, um, but it's uh, it's it's essentially a uh, a falling wedge in a rising market. What does what does that falling wedge typically mean? So leave that in the comment section down below if you know. But I'll give you a hint. I'm keeping my breakout trade alive up there above me um, for now. Looking at my bonds uh, and our bond position, we have a breakout setup in the bonds. Uh, price has not come into that breakout area as of yet. We're also seeing a potential breakout to the downside in the bonds, although I'm not in love with the breakout to the downside because I don't have as much room to roam uh, as I do. So nothing really to add in the bond market. Aussie dollar, uh, I've said for a couple of days I wasn't comfortable with it, and this is why. With a little bit of sideways chop, I think you wind up taking a bunch more risk. I don't want to play those tiny little turns in between. I want to trade the extremes of supply and demand imbalance, which I haven't quite seen yet. Uh, the euro... The euro off of our uh, off of our trade from earlier in the week has really moved down. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you're still short from our euro trade uh, that we talked about last week, because uh, that one is still moving nicely, and we are getting a little bit of what could be considered a uh, a, a bear flag right here. Right, we're getting a little bit of a bear flag pattern that's forming. Not that I use the, not that I use those, uh, the you know the pattern to make the decision. Right, the pattern, a pattern is never going to make a trading decision for me. However, if all of my breakout rules set up, then I would take the short because the breakout told me to do so based on my breakout rules. The pattern is just something that I can easily recognize. Now, um, I actually am looking at this area up here for my potential reversal, and that comes into play way up here. And those are those wick over wick areas right in there. Uh, in the Canadian dollar, we still have our level up above here in the Canadian. Price came close to it, and we were unable to penetrate it. So that tells me that I now convert this to a confirmation style entry. It changes its entry type when I come close and I base below it, so it's a confirmation style entry at this point. Wait for price to get in and get short as it comes out. Um, 
for those of you that are not that don't know how we trade confirmation style entries, um, if you go to uh, tradersarmy.com, if you're a free subscriber, I think under our uh, under our free trading videos, there's actually a, a, a lesson on how we trade them. Japanese yen. So in the Japanese yen, uh, we had converted this to a confirmation style entry. Price came right through that level and popped right below it. Uh, so that level should not have been triggered based on those rules. Uh, unfortunately, that means all these drawings that I put up there, I got to remove uh, because they're no good to me once the level is DTM or dead to me. Uh, so now I'm going to look above me. And as I look above me, I'm going to come right to here as my next potential reversal. And it is this area right in here where I have those wicks um, all popping along each other, former area of support. We double topped in through here, uh, and then we're seeing a nice move down. Now we're just kind of basing through here so we could get a pop up into that region before we see that reversal in the yen. Uh, in the pound, so in the pound, we had a little bit of a, of a, of a rally off of this big daily level. It's, uh, it came up to a potential reversal point. I looked at this level yesterday and said, nah, you know, I just don't like this. Well, I'm an idiot. No, um, it came to the level. I didn't uh, decide that I, was, I, I liked the level up here for a higher probability, and we've kind of moved down from that area at this point. What we're looking at here on the daily is really where we saw that reversal. Uh, I, I also didn't think that this was going to hold or have a tremendous amount of, of impact. It's been tested a few times. Uh, and so I'm still waiting for a better rally into supply for me to get short on that kind of thing. So as far as today goes, um, you know, we're up a little bit this morning. But, the, you know, in this market, for those of you that have been paying attention, we can be up 20 and then finish the day down. We can be up, we can be down 50 and finish the day up. So I think the key is to still wait for your high probability areas. And now as the markets are getting a little bit wider in our, you know, 17 points is, is less than three quarters of a percent. Uh, I can, I can remember a, a very clear time when 17 points would have been the biggest move for an entire month. Uh, now 17 points happens like that. So, uh, but the futures, you know, th though the percentages are smaller for on a futures trade, one point is still $50 into your account for every contract. So, you know, your, your moves have been magnified, uh, which also magnifies your risk. And if these levels are starting to get too wide for you, don't stay with futures. Um, I'm a huge believer. Nobody got into this business to be a futures trader. You got into this business to be a trader and to make money. And so maybe it's a better opportunity to go look at options. Uh, if you're new to options and don't have any options experience, uh, go to tradersarmy.com. Uh, take a look at our options class that's upcoming in October. It might be the right thing for you. Uh, if traveling uh, to Houston and coming to a live three-day class doesn't make any sense, uh, we also have recorded uh, classes to subscribers. So take a look if it's something that makes sense. All right, everybody. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. And uh, we will be back uh, on Friday with the Daily Market Commentary. Tomorrow we have a live trade. So I will see you all soon.